Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Luke here. And welcome to part one of many of the Magic the Gathering tutorial. I'm going to be walking through how to play Magic the Gathering, the card game. If you're a veteran of Magic, this might be pretty boring and monotonous, and I'd advise you not to watch this series. But if you're new to the game, never played it before, and you want to know how Magic the Gathering is played, this is the place for you. And I saw a lot of comments on my most recent Magic series of people saying, Luke, what the heck is going on? I've never played Magic before. I don't know what's happening. Help me out. So this is for you guys. And we're going to walk through the Magic 2015 tutorials because I think the duels of the Planeswalkers video games do a great job of explaining game mechanics. Probably a lot better than I could while we're playing. So grab your favorite beverage, kick up your feet, and let's learn how to play some Magic, all right? We're going to start with uh, playing lands, summoning creatures, and combat. Let's jump into it. You are a Planeswalker. Planeswalkers draw mana from lands they visited and use that energy to summon creatures to defeat their rivals. In the Magic game, you'll use your creatures to attack your opponent or to block an attack. Welcome to Magic. You and your opponents take the role of Planeswalkers, powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. Looks like we get a voice tutorial so I can save my voice. And we'll let this lovely lady teach us how to play magic. To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down from 20 to 0. To do this, you will use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled cards. All players have their own decks to play with. We call this your library. At the beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing, called a mulligan. To take a closer look at your cards, zoom in. As you can see, magic cards have many symbols and words. We'll explain what they mean as the game continues. To begin playing magic, you must complete a series of quests. Each quest will be related to one of the five colors of magic. As you can see, we got the five colors right here. We have plains, which are white, mountains, which are red, swamps, which are black, forests, which are green, and islands, which are blue. For the first quest, you're playing a green deck. Green's specialty is large, powerful creatures. Your opponent is Crimson Mage. To cast spells or summon creatures, you're going to need some resources. In magic, the main resource, mana, comes from lands. Every turn you may play a land from your hand. Once you have enough lands on the battlefield, you'll have the mana you need to cast spells, including summoning creatures. Play a land now. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll pass the turn to Crimson Mage. Crimson Mage will also play lands to build the resources he needs to cast spells. Now, he will cast a spell. Crimson Mage has summoned a creature. Attacking with creatures, like Crazed Goblin, is the major way players defeat their opponents. On every creature card, the bottom corner displays its power and toughness. Power is the amount of damage a creature deals in combat. Toughness is the amount of damage needed to destroy this creature. Every spell has a mana cost. To summon Crazed Goblin, it costs Crimson Mage a single red mana. It's represented by this symbol. He had to use up or tap his land to pay to cast this spell. Tapped cards are turned sideways. Mana costs can be more complex than crazed goblins. Summoning this creature will cost four mana, and two of the mana must be green. 
When a player gains control of a creature, it can't attack or do anything that requires tapping. This is called summoning sickness. These creatures will have a dizzy look to them. But we can expect the crazed goblin to attack on Crimson Mage's next turn. You can see the little summoning sickness symbol here, this little whirlwind typhoon. Now it's our turn. Let's summon Colonian Tusker. To cast this spell, play a second land, and then choose the creature that costs two green mana. This creature's power and toughness are 3-3. Three, three. More than a match for that crazed goblin. Let's pass the turn. Now, Crimson Mage will play a land and then attack us with the Crazed Goblin. The Crazed Goblin has to attack because its rules say it must. When a creature attacks, it taps and moves forward. Now you have a chance to respond with creatures you want to block with. You happen to have a creature on the battlefield that will block very well. If Crimson Mage's attacking creatures aren't blocked, you will take damage. Your Colonian Tusker can keep you safe. Creatures with summoning sickness can block. Block the crazed goblin! Go ahead and block this crazed goblin. During the combat damage step, each creature deals damage equal to their power. This time, these creatures will deal damage to each other at the same time. Crazed goblin will die, and the Colonian Tusker will survive. At the end of every turn, each creature heals. Any damage dealt to them is removed. You don't have to keep track of damage from turn to turn. Play another land. Now it's our chance to attack Crimson Mage. We'll go ahead and attack with our Colonian Tusker. Because he doesn't have any creatures to block with, Crimson Mage will take three points of damage. You don't have any spells that you can cast for now, so let's pass the turn. See what he just put in here. A blood crazed neonate. Wicked vampire lady. Attacks each turn if able. When it deals combat damage to a player, it gets plus one, plus one counter, improving its attack and defense. Time to attack. Send your Colonian Tusker into combat. Remember that you can't attack with your Rumbling Bayloth yet because it has summoning sickness. It's important to know that in magic, you can only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent. You don't have control over which of your opponent's creatures will block. Unless the card says otherwise, blocked creatures deal all damage to the creatures that blocked them. No damage is dealt to the defending player. Blocking with small creatures to not take any damage is sometimes a good strategy. This 
time, we're going to try something a little different. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell before combat, wait until after combat. This is a common strategy to keep your land back and not cast spells to make it look like you might have a combat trick in your hand. Now, attack with both of your creatures. It looks like Crimson Mage has decided not to block with his Bloodrock Cyclops, so he'll take seven damage. Awesome. So he fell for the bluff and figured we had a combat trick to buff this and didn't block. During the main phase after combat, go ahead and play your land. You'll be in great shape to win if you cast this creature next. Put our centaurs out. Crimson Mage will play a land and attack. Things are looking good. So it looks like he must have had to attack with this Cyclops, because it's required to attack each turn. So we'll just go ahead and block it and kill it. All you need to do now is attack with everything. Just attack with everything and end him. In quest two, we'll spice up the battle with other kinds of spells. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the first part of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope it helps a lot in understanding how to play Magic the Gathering. If you guys have any more questions, ask me in the comments below or just continue on to the next part of the tutorial and maybe your, answer, your questions will be answered there. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.